Uh, we want to take a look at cutting wood slices on the bandsaw. You can do this on a bandsaw or you can do it on a chop saw. Uh, I don't happen to have a chop saw. I think it's safer to do it on a bandsaw, but it's certainly uh, doable on, on a chop saw. Uh, when you think about this, in theory, there's two ways. You, you want to get an even slice. That is, you want to have a fairly even thickness all the way through so that it lays flat and it's level on both sides. Uh, one way you could think about doing that is using a fence like this. So you would, in that case, slide the, the fence in, lock it down, and then push it through. The problem with, with a fence uh, is that you, you can end up doing this sort of thing, and that can bind the blade. So I actually prefer using a miter gauge. Uh, this is a miter gauge and your bandsaw will have uh, a track for that. And so you lay it flat onto the table like this, and then we're going to use this to push it straight through and keep it level. Now you still have a little issue of that same sort of, but you have to hold it with your hands and you can hold it firmly against the miter gauge like so. So let me put my safety gear on and I'm going to cut a slice here to demonstrate. Uh, it'll be a little bit noisy. <laughs> So you can see we come out with a very uniform, even uh, slice of wood. Uh, now we need to dry that, of course, uh, before we can use it because this log has not necessarily uh, been dried. Once we've cut our wood slices, we need to dry them. Uh, and there's a few tips we would like to give you for drying. Uh, first of all, it's uh, very beneficial to put uh, some kind of a, uh, a finish on it, some kind of a preparation coat on it. And you can use a lot of things, which you can look at uh, down below in the article. The one thing you don't want to put on here before drying is latex paint. But there are many other things that you can use. Uh, there are w different ways to, uh, to dry it out. You can use a microwave oven, for instance, or you could use a toaster oven. What I think is the easiest, the safest, and you get the, the best, most consistent results is your normal household oven. Uh, what, will, what you need to do with your oven is set it up like a kiln. That's K-I-L-N, like a kiln, which is a commercial drying of lumber uh, facility. A kiln uh, gives uniform heat for uh, low, low levels of heat for a long period of time to dry out the wood. And you want to try to simulate that using your household oven. So you want to use a very low temperature, as low as your oven will go and still heat. Uh, and you want to make sure that air can circulate inside the oven on both surfaces. So you don't want to lay it flat on the bottom of the oven. Uh, you want to put it on the, on the grill. Uh, or the the, uh, uh, the surface to, to do that. And you want to leave it in there for, I would say, a minimum of 24 hours at that low temperature to drive that moisture out of there. So 24 to 36 hours should do it in an oven which is set as low a temperature uh, as you can have it. Yeah, the reason we even go to all this trouble of drying this out and doing it in a, in a homemade kiln is to prevent these wood slices from cracking because that's a very real danger when you cut them yourselves. Uh, you really need to dry them and get all the moisture out. The moisture will come and go and that can move the wood and cause it to crack. So it's very important that you dry it.